Welcome once again right now to Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. Freedom from sin. Paul continues his letter. Stand firm, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And don't be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, tell you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will profit you nothing. Yes, I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is a debtor to do the whole law. You are alienated from Christ, you who desire to be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. There is such a thing as going through the motions and not really being saved. I think we all know that. There is a huge difference, a world of difference between a doer of the law, according to the book of Romans, where it says the doers of the law will be justified, and the works of the law. The doers of the law are those who hear and obey and apply the law in their lives by faith. The works of the law are those who, you know, they can't really obey the law, but they can serve as much as the law tells them to serve. For example, if the law says, you know, bring an ox you know, to the temple and this kind of thing. They can do that. That doesn't mean that they are not committing adultery, not murdering, not involved in sexual immorality, you know, not taking the name of the Lord in vain. Much of what we would consider to be the law today are thou shalt not commands, okay? Thou shalt not. That is not something that you work for. Thou shalt not commands are not commands that call you to work. They're actually commands that call you not to work. So obeying those commands are not works of the law. They're the opposite, actually. They are putting to death the works that you shouldn't be doing. And the commands to do are actually commands that call for your death, so to speak, your self-denial, self-sacrifice. For example, thou shalt love the Lord your God. Well, in order to love the Lord your God, is that a work? Is that something you got to work for? No, it's something that just comes by naturally by faith in believing, okay? It's a command that calls for self-sacrifice. It's a command that calls you to not go by your lust, not go by your feelings, but to be more concerned about what God thinks about something as opposed to what you think about something. Another one is, thou shalt honor your father and your mother. Is that a work? No, you don't work for that. That's not something that's calling for your work, but that's something that's calling you to self-sacrifice, to honor them above yourself. Obeying the law of God is not about works, but it's about self-sacrifice. It is about self-denial. Verse five, for we, through the spirit, by faith, wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision amounts to anything nor uncircumcision, but faith working through love. That's very key here, working. Here is faith. Paul's teaching about faith working. Not just faith, but a certain kind of works. The works of faith. And this is what James said, faith without works is dead. And I guarantee you that dead faith Faith without works will not get you an inch toward heaven. You were running well. Who interfered with you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little yeast grows through the whole lump, through the whole batch of dough, in other words. I have confidence towards you in the Lord that you will think no other way. But he who troubles you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. But I, brothers, if I still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? Then the stumbling block of the cross has been removed. I wish that those who disturb you would cut themselves off. For you, brothers, were called for freedom. Only don't use your freedom for gain to the flesh, but through love be servants to one another. So here we are again. Paul is talking about doing something here. He's talking about a law, which is actually God's law. Don't use your freedom for breaking God's law. Don't use your freedom for gain to the flesh, to serve the flesh, to serve your own selfish lusts and desires. So here, Paul is 
pulling in the Torah. He is pulling in the Torah saying, listen, you got to obey this. Your freedom is not freedom to break Torah. Your freedom is freedom from sin. And sin is defined in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, transgression of the law. When you break, when you violate the law of God, that is sin. Paul is saying your freedom is freedom from sin, not freedom to sin. And to their detriment, many Christians today believe that it's okay to sin. It's okay to violate Torah. It's okay to violate the law of God because we've got freedom in Christ. That is a hell-damning heresy. Verse 14, for the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And this is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. But if you bite and devour one another, be careful that you don't consume one another. My question is this. How do you love your neighbor as yourself? Let's go on over to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18 to find out. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. There is a command against hating your brother. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. God says very clearly here, right in the context of love, 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 loving your neighbor, you shall rebuke them. In other words, in order to love them, you need to rebuke them if they are sinning. And this is opposite to what a lot of people believe today. It's like, if you tell them they're sinning, if you rebuke them, well, that's hate total and utter nonsense. That is love. When you rebuke your neighbor and you don't let them sin, when you protest their sin, that is love according to the same word that teaches you love your neighbor. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. I am Yahuwah. And don't miss the next session. This is going to be awesome. We're going to be talking about what Paul said, what will damn your soul to hell. You think up until this point in the book of Galatians that Paul is talking against the law. You know, oh, you don't have to follow any law. All you got to do is just go by the spirit. Just go by faith. Well, wait until next session. You will be a surprise. Seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.